I would like to buy 7,000 stocks of GameStop. <laughs> the whole system has collapsed. <laughs> Some millionaire is going to have to shit on a regular toilet tonight. <laughs> Bane, these what? fucking nerds are taking down this, the whole stock market. Of yes. course. <laughs> Actually, that was one of the best lines in The Dark Light Rises. When the guy, he, whenever Bane robs the stock exchange and he, he like shows up there and the guy's all like, why are you here? There's no money. There's no money here. There's no actual money here. And he's like, really? <laughs> then why are you here? Because <laughs> the cup is the secret to the Bane voice. It would be extremely painful. Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah. Yes, of course. Yes. The dread, the dread <laughs> man is the king of Gotham. Oh my god, it's perfect. We do a whole podcast as Bane. When Gotham is in ashes. You have my permission to subscribe. <laughs> the, re the reason I was defeated by Batman is because I forgot to grind for levels between battles. For some reason, when he used to punch me in the face, it didn't hurt. But the second time when he punched me in the face, it hurt very badly. And then I got killed by some bitch on a bike. I'm glad I'm recording eight minutes of this. <laughs> oh, so is Joe. Trust me. Oh, I've yeah. been recording this for 15 minutes. I have all of this. Time time like I wish I hadn't drank all my water, but now I'm like, no, it's fine. You found yourself with. Can we just water. do this for like 30 more minutes and just put that as an episode and see what people think? <laughs> it's like a midweek drop. Everybody's like, sweet, wow. Earth Crisis. All right, play. You're listening to Discography Discussion, episode 211, Earth Crisis, hosted by Dan Terry. The Dark Lord lives on the 16th floor of the <laughs> temple. <laughs> How do I defeat him? He's all powerful. Good luck. John Beatty. So it says here that you're a death therapist. Am I reading that correctly? And Joseph Wren. I'm on a work outreach program to repay my debt to society. Hello, has anyone called you about your extended cards warranty? <laughs> Presented by DiscussMetal.com And if you breed the killers to find the one ring, then you are ready for this episode of Discography Discussion. I am Joe, that is Dan, that is John, Bane is here. Nobody cared who I was until I started wearing the mask. <laughs> For those that haven't heard the last 30 minutes of whatever the hell that was, we're talking about Earth Crisis. We are talking about Earth Crisis. We absolutely have not just been doing Bane voices into cups for the past <laughs> half hour. Uh, Earth Crisis is a really interesting band for me because they're a classic hardcore band. And you guys know how I have a serious for classic hardcore bands uh, from the mid 90s, mid to late 90s. And Earth Crisis is no exception. They're, they're absolutely one of the best bands in the metal core. Yeah, that's right. I said it. They mix metal and hardcore. They're one of the best bands in that scene. And uh, I just, I really felt like we needed to talk about them soon so that people stop emailing me being like, yo, where's the, cri where's the Earth Crisis episode? I'm looking at the schedule and sometime this summer, I don't have to do any work. This was the week Dan didn't have to do any work. We're talking about Earth Crisis. It's hardcore. It's metalcore. Dan's good to go. John, I, mean, I don't much. know about you. I listen to Earth Crisis, but I've never sat down and listened to every record by this band. Granted, I spent a lot of time in the passenger seat while Dan was driving very fast down the highway, and whatever he wanted to listen to, well, he just had to get his way. Sounds an awful lot like Bane. He does. I mean, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you think you're in charge, but you're not in charge, you know? Uh, Earth Crisis, for, for me is one of the bands that I can, whenever I hear a hardcore band, is what I compare them to. Um, they just have the perfect combination of acidic vocals and very punchy, like, like I don't know, just very, very punchy beatdown sort of moments. Um, and, and I feel like bands like this are massively overlooked in the sense that, and not that Earth Crisis is overlooked, but bands like them, um, Strong Arm comes to mind, uh, they're, that are very overlooked because of what metal and hardcore became after the 2000s. Right. This isn't straight beat down core, but it has that 
early sense of breakdowns or where it's at, guys. Yeah, and this band has breakdowns. However, they don't, they're not as, uh, to, to quote what John said on another episode, uh, they're not self-indulgent with it. They're, they they have something to say. They're hardcore about it, and they go for it. And and that's, uh, you know, that's, that's the essence of what I think good hardcore really is. Well, before Dan sets the standard of what hardcore is to the death, I'm going to take this time to say thank you to everyone for listening to the podcast. Thank you for listening and for subscribing. If you are not a subscriber, then you can find everything Discography Discussion at DiscussMetal.com. We are on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. So if you have an Amazon Echo or a Google Home, you have no excuse. Ask it to play the latest episode of the Discography Discussion podcast, and it will. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe. It really helps us out. It lets us know you're listening. And now Dan is going to tell us all about five star reviews. Hey, 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 guys! It's Dan here. I'm 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 a host on this podcast, and I'm here to tell you today you should leave us a five star review on whatever podcasting app allows you to do so. It just helps us out. At the very least, it makes us feel better. We like we like reading them. We want to read them on the show, so leave them for us so we can read them. On top of that, uh, I want to thank everybody who's been sharing the episodes all over the social media networks. Everybody is super stoked about that, especially mods in Facebook groups. They just love it when you guys spam our stuff all over the place. And uh, so, you know, keep doing that so that I don't go to Facebook jail. But if you do go to Facebook jail because of it, you're doing it. You're doing it for the cause. And for that, I, I salute you. I would also like to take a moment to acknowledge our wonderful Patreon subscribers. This number has been growing and uh, I couldn't be happier to be reading off the names of these fine folks. We have Richard Renz. Welcome to the party. Christopher and Rebecca Sherling, Tyler, Josiah Heiberg, Luke Robinson, Brandon Miranda, Ken Zapla, Tantalized Fungians. Best name ever. Jeremy Prince, Josh Moser, David Brown, Samuel Woodward, Brian Dean, Kiki Kuti, do you love me? I do love you. Lance Allegood, the king of metal. Alexander, Patrick Aspland, Jeffrey De Los Santos. The actual Mac. You guys are awesome. We appreciate you. We love everything that you guys do for the podcast, and we want to do more for you guys. So, uh, if there's more stuff that you want, just let us know. We are here for you. So, Dan, tell me about Earth Crisis. I'm glad you asked me that, Joe. Earth Crisis is a hardcore band from New York because that's where all the best hardcore comes from, right? Uh, these guys have been around since 1989. Uh, they broke up in about 2000, 2001, came back in 2007, uh, and have been going strong as far as I know uh, ever since. Uh, these guys are one of the bands that defined this sort of like metal and hardcore mixture uh, in the mid 90s and early 2000s. Uh, and they've also been one of the most uh, outspoken bands uh, as far as um, activism goes. Um, just, I mean, pretty much anything. Uh, straight edge, you know, anti drugs, anti animal products, animal testing, uh, meat packing industry, uh, illegal drug testing, uh, envi- I'm sorry, illegal drug trading, and like even just like environmentalist stuff. Like these guys are, these guys have a lot to say. And uh, as we'll kind of get into a little bit, I think sometimes it takes a little bit away from their lyrical content, but definitely not their passion. It's passionate hardcore for the most part. Dan has beaten into the head of almost everyone he knows that passionate hardcore is the way to be. You have to project your emotions into the lyrics, into the energy of the show. It has the punk rock energy. It's heavy. It's melodic. You love it. I love it. John, did you have fun this week? Yeah. I mean, when I stopped living the living sacrifice. (laughs) Back on that train again, are we? Well, this is legitimately that. This is what I was supposed to be listening to. And then I messaged Dan about something about, are there any like Latin people in this band? And Dan was like, what? And I was like, you know, like the Latin percussion stuff that's popping through. And he goes, the fuck are you talking about? John did not survive the cattle decapitation discography. He has lasting effects. He's going to need some type of therapy. I would like to recommend some death therapy. Thank you, John. We're on that same page there. (laughs) Yes, we were. But um, no, Earth Crisis, this was actually a lot of fun. I mean, um, a lot of my favorite hardcore is East Coast hardcore. Um, I think it was probably, by and large, everyone's introduction into the, the genre. Um, you know, there are plenty of other bands in different areas territorial, territorially that probably also put their stamp on it. But 
I think uh, East Coast Hardcore is some of the best. And the way they just kind of melded a lot of the multiple kinds of genres going on. I mean, I think that's, you know, as we talked about in the episode for Candiria, you know, I made the comment that a band like Candiria exists because of the melting pot that is New York. And I think that it's very prevalent, even in Earth Crisis' of sound. Um, at times, to the, to the band's detriment. <laughs> They definitely have a very interesting mix of sounds, uh, and this isn't like uh, this isn't like the cattle decapitation episode where you know you saw the band progress steadily throughout their career. These guys more or less just kind of go all over the place, uh, and you're not really sure what you're going to expect from one record to the next. Uh, and I think that that is fresh. It makes for a more interesting listen. Uh, like John said, I think maybe it's uh, not always great. Like it's not always um, to their benefit. Uh, a band like this, I mean, really, if to be more successful than they have been, would have been to just hate breed it out the entire time. Um, and uh, but they didn't do that, so I have to give them props for at least uh, trying to change it up. 1995, destroy the machines. All time classic, ten out of ten. Would buy again. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, Earth Crisis records, and it's funny because I I messaged Brian Patton earlier today, and I was like, "What's your favorite Earth Crisis record?" Because I can't decide what my favorite one is. Uh, and he's like, yeah, I don't know. And I was like, well, I mean, I don't actually have to pick a favorite, but um, this one, this one's definitely up there uh, just because of oh, what a pure representation of hardcore was at that time. Um, it's heavy. It's got pissed off vocals. Um, it's 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 the most punk influenced hardcore that they that they did, really. Um, and it almost gives you the vibe that Earth Crisis is a totally different band uh, than you've heard uh, because most people, again, probably didn't start here. They probably started later on in the in the discography. Uh, and so what you get here is the purest representation of what the band's vision was, uh, which is just them being hardcore, intense, heavy, not really melodic, but like it's heavy in that ni- mid 90s way that like I just feel like people can't really capture today. Uh, that's my old person statement for this uh, for this one. Uh, it's just that like there's a heaviness there with that with those 90s guitars and just the feeling of this band just came into a room and played these songs and then left you know yep cut the record and we're good um i don't know i love this i love this record it's very passionate it's very heavy it's very in your face and um it absolutely laid the groundwork for a lot of bands uh to come don't don't either one of you crap on it (laughs) you're like oh well i got nothing to say joe you got anything my standard of what hardcore is supposed to sound like in the mid 90s starts with Zeo. It's Dan's fault that that's where my brain begins the journey. When I listen to this, I hear the influence of punk rock, a little bit of the groove metal Pantera approach, but it's not dissonant hardcore. This is more of your hate breed. Let's play the fucking riff and just push the song forward. It's three minutes of something that you're going to recognize. It's not the most complex thing you've ever heard, but it is straightforward. It is to the point, and the band is definitely in charge of the stage while this record is being played. It sounds like hardcore to me, and for that, absolutely. 10 out of 10. This reminds me of what I love about the early years of East Coast hardcore and its influences that range from you know straight-ahead hardcore to, like you guys have been saying, some punk, some more straight-ahead thrash i'll even say um i know that's a favorite term joe youth likes to use on the show quite a bit um it's raw it's honest and has something to say in this instance you know dan already kind of covered a lot of the lyrical themes tackled on this between just straight up straight and straight edge veganism social political issues and so forth um born from the pain and destroy the machines i think really showcases a bit of all of that earth crisis brings to the table right away on this record and what I think most people think of when they hear the name Earth Crisis and what they think of. Um, I think this is a, a good starting point for the band. Um, I'll just kind of leave it at that because uh, this journey is about to get really interesting. And uh, I'll save some of my more negative comments <laughs> for the stuff coming ahead. This is the Earth Crisis that influenced hardcore, right? Sounds like. I mean, I at one point I was like, is Jamie Jost on this track? Like, not even kidding. I thought he really was. Well, I think that I, I think that yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely a similar vocal style. I think everybody kind of sounded like that. I think even even in the hate read episode, we kind of talked about that. How like it's not even that it's not even that Jamie Josta is necessarily like notable for having those vocals uh, as much as that's just what everybody sounded like. And then as the band got more popular, he just continued to sound like that, <laughs> you know. Um, whereas most people kind of change their vocal style up uh, on their next record. 
uh, where uh, Earth Crisis definitely did do that, uh, like big time. And um, <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's a very different experience going between uh, the first record to the next. 1996, Gamora's season ends. All right, guys, we need you. We, yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, did you guys, uh, you, you guys did really great on your first record. Can you do the same record with half the budget? Yeah, like, honestly, this record really threw me. Like, when I put it on, I was like, am I going in the right order? Like, this sounds like a first record, not the second record. Like, I'm, I don't think I've ever heard the second record sound so much worse than the first one from a production standpoint. Uh, like I said, I had to, I had to keep double checking and going like, I, I'm doing these in the right order, right? Um, I that I think right away really took me out of this record. I think the mix took the balls away from the guitars uh, and really the band as a whole. I feel like they just kind of got their balls taken away. Um, you can still tell that there's good songs on this record, but this is probably an example where if I would have seen this band live and I heard these songs first that way and then bought the record, I would have been really confused as to why I didn't pack the same punch as what I just saw in that room. Um, there also seems to be a little bit more of a shift away from the traditional hardcore sound that they had on their first record and more of a groove thing. Um, again, Joe, when did this record come out? 1996. Okay, so we're kind of at the tail end sort of a Pantera, but like groove metal and that kind of shit is in full effect at this point. Um, something, you know, I have kind of thought about in this whole thing is at times I feel like this band it's hard for me to say this because I didn't necessarily grow up with them in real time so I'm kind of saying this in 2021 but it feels at times this band was trend chasing a little bit and you know I, I kind of look at a song like morality dictates and I'm kind of like what is this why is this on this record like that to me didn't sound like an earth crisis song and I think moving forward, we're going to kind of have a lot more of that where I'm like, what, what is this? Or, is this Earth Crisis? We've encountered it more than once where the second record by a hardcore band just does not sound as good sonically as the first one. And I think that has something to do with the timing and the budget and the time spent writing the second record. Dan said it many times. You have your whole life to write your first album. And then you have to do it again in less than one year. So maybe they just didn't have the same access to a studio or most of the time the first record suffers from studio anxiety where you're trying so hard to lock it in because you don't want to fuck it up and you don't want to waste time and waste money. The second time you've done this before, so you're a little more free. But I agree, it doesn't sound as good as the first record. And both of these were released by Victory Records, so I have to assume somebody was listening that made the decision this master sounds good let's put it out well i mean they even did the hate breed records too so i mean there's plenty of examples back then of better sounding records absolutely yeah i'm not sure what the deal was this one just sounds a lot more washed out than than the other one did and uh but that doesn't necessarily take away from the content of the record itself i think that the songs are stronger uh, i think the band is heavier they're more dissonant um and again they've got a little bit of that groove and I'm wondering if just like by 96, you know, uh, the metal aspect of your metalcore, or your metal influenced hardcore, metallic hardcore or whatever they called it back then. Um, I think that the originally it was like, yeah, let's do like a thrashy sort of sort of hardcore band. Whereas now we're moving more into like slower, um, just a slower pace overall and kind of really letting that groove take over the heaviness. You know, people started realizing that a slower, heavier riff is almost more heavy than a really quick chunk. Um, and that's why that's why bands like this in the in the mid to late 90s started getting heavier, but started kind of slowing down a little bit and not being that super fast, like up tempo punk hardcore thing. Um, that's where a lot of these bands, you know, were passable as metal bands uh, at the time, even though they weren't playing like shred solos or stuff. And, you know, in the mid 90s, people weren't as into that stuff anyway. Everybody was kind of trying to move away from all that um, and had basically successfully done so. And so when you get a record like Gamora's Season Ends, it's um, it's kind of a blueprint for what hardcore was going to be up until like 97, 98. Um, there, I, can, I can name so many bands that basically just wrote this record <laughs> and gave it different lyrics 
and then moved on with it. But Earth Crisis was one of the pioneering bands doing this at the time. Um, and so, yeah, like for that, I, I really enjoy the record because of its historical significance. Um, and I like the songs on it. I like the vocals, too. I think the vocals are better on the second record than on the first. They're more raw. They're a little bit less tough guy. They're more passionate. We're going to move to 1998, Breed the Killers. But I want to make special mention of The Oath That Keeps Me Free. It's a live record. It was released around the same time as this album. I love early discography live records because it's the closest thing you're going to get to seeing that band live at the time. That is worth a listen. You should check it out. I mean, some of those live versions actually sound better than some of the uh, <laughs> some of the <laughs> album versions. I mean, somebody had to say it, right? Um, yeah, I think The Oath That Keeps Me Free is awesome. I think it's it's one of the better live records I've heard. Especially from a hardcore band that, you know, wasn't putting on some sort of big theatrical show, you know. Um, it's they, they have always just been a band gets on stage and plays their stuff and it gets off, you know. Um, and I think, yeah, that's a, that's actually, you know, we don't really mention live records too much here. But, yeah, that, that one definitely did deserve special mention. Breed the Killers. Can we? Um, breed the Killers, man. If you insist. This is, yeah, I was talking about the pace slowing down, you know. Uh, these guys picked up the pace on this one. You get a little bit more of that hardcore in it. You get a little more of that hardcore, as we know it today, uh, sound, that, that that upbeat in your face. There's a lot more punk rock on this one, too. It's a little bit less metal, a little bit more punk. Um, the vocals are great. The vocals are delivered in less of a harsh scream fashion and more in like almost a sing-songy hardcore scream. And it works. It works really well. Some of my favorite hardcore is the non-dissonant variety, and Earth Crisis is just playing a fucking rock song or a metal song and screaming over it. That works really well, and the market becoming saturated with that dissonant hardcore sound, you don't hear a lot of positive words about bands that basically played punk rock or false thrash and screamed over it so to hear this in 1998 when i expected the third record to go full dissonant hardcore this was a nice change and it exceeded my expectations because it didn't go too far into where the mainstream was going to go it stayed at the root which is that punk rock feel again you know we're, we're three records in at this point and this band seemingly keeps changing up their sound, not like super drastically, but enough to where you're like, are you trying to sound current with the rest of the heavy music landscape? Even vocally, there's been a change in the approach almost again. You know, this is where like my not wanting to use the wrong term is going to come into play, but almost death metal like at times, like with the, the, the style. And also, you know, to kind of further illustrate the point of like, I feel like they're trying to keep up with whatever is current. You know, you look at a song like Drug Related Homicide and there's kind of like that Kill Switch Engage kind of style riffing, which I guess you could even say is borrowed from like At The Gates and stuff like that as well. Um, Overseer, Overseers even brings in the like squeals and shit that you started really hearing everyone start doing. And it's just like how much of that is just being an East Coast band and kind of being maybe influenced by playing with a lot of that New England area uh, sound that was starting to happen and them kind of being like, you know what, that's kind of cool. Like, let's kind of let's kind of try to bring some of that in here or, or whatever. But I, I, there's good stuff on here, but I, I more for me, I kept kind of just coming back to this sounds like you're you're trying to figure out who you are or what you want to be, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think it's hard. I think it's it, it's a thin line between wanting to or wondering if the band is trend hopping or if they're innovating and i think that's that's the hard part it's a who came first the chicken or the egg sort of thing um you know they're they're constantly changing up their style and i think that i feel just based on everything else that i've heard from this band um in context of the year that this came out in 1998 hardcore metalcore was changing all over the place you started getting you know more of your like dead guy coalesque uh billinger escape plan uh, type of stuff, whereas these guys kind of come from the older school of hardcore, um, which is, you know, realistically only a couple of years, you know, before, uh, but they still, they kind of still bear that torch of coming from an older type of hardcore, um, and they've still kind of got that East Coast sound. They don't have that, they don't have the weird Midwesternness, which is what made, I think, sometimes those Dead Guy records and stuff, or uh, even Dillinger stuff, like, almost sound so alien because it was so disconnected from the hardcore scene in general. 
And then you have Earth Crisis, where they're introducing elements of groove metal and hard rock and, you know, whatever is popular in hardcore that year. But I think they are largely one of the ba- one of the few hardcore bands that started off the way they did that didn't just continue to sound like that throughout their career. Whereas, like, a band like Hatebreed continued to just sound like Hatebreed through, for most of their career. I mean, yeah, sure, it, it changes a little bit over time, but, like, the, the, the idea, the message is still the same. Whereas Earth Crisis has put out three records now, and they all sound vastly different from one another. Yeah, well, I feel like you that's know? kind of a problem to a degree. Maybe. Do they really sound different? Sonically, I think yes, they do. but the overall theme seems to be the same. The theme is the same, yeah. The theme is the same, but the approach of how that theme is carried out has changed. And it's going it's to change <laughs> drastically on this next record. Oh, John's ready for this one. It is mm-hmm. the year 2000, Slither. All right. <laughs> so, holy shit, here we are. I've been saying this <laughs> the whole time that I feel like they're just kind of adding influences of current heavy music or trend hopping. And where what do we got here? A full on fucking new up new a full on fucking new metal album. Like this is not what I want from this band. When I think of Earth Crisis, when I think of Earth Crisis, this is not what I want. This is not Honestly, they should have they should have changed their name on this album or something cuz this is not Earth Earth God damn it. This is not Earth Crisis. And I'd be shocked if they played any of this in a live setting. Like I can't imagine fans of this band being stoked when buying this record and being like, "What the fuck is this like even when you try not my earth crisis like even when you try to just appreciate this as a new metal album it's still not good so like there's no redeeming quality to this record to me like even the title track like the only good positive thing that i can say about some of this is like like the title track itself like i think is the chorus is good but not for earth crisis like this is a prime example of like where i'm like Fred Durst write some of this shit for you guys? Or like, what? what is this? This is not Earth Crisis. That's It'd be a lot better if Fred Durst would have wrote some of it for him. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just, I'm not, like, this, again, you know, like I did with the other one where I'm like, I had to go back to the second record and go, am I listening out of, to these out of order? I had to go back and make sure that somehow something random didn't pop up in my listening of Earth Crisis. <laughs> like, suggested artists you might like. <laughs> I love it because there's clean vocals and and rapping uh, going on here, <laughs> and like you know, this is not like this is not like some sort of tasteful mixture of hardcore and hip hop like Candiria. Weird. This, this is. Um, I mean, that you can only call this trend hopping, because like if they were if they were genuinely trying to innovate new metal out of hardcore, they would have done that in like 1995, <laughs> 1996, right? Uh, by 2000. Yeah, it, what I what I think is the most funny about this too is that the band for their last two records, I believe, maybe it was their la- just their previous record, uh, came out. Breed the Killers it came out on Roadrunner, like they they netted a deal with Roadrunner, and it's weird when I'm listening to the discography discussion and I'm like, Slither wasn't the Roadrunner album. <laughs> Slither Slither came out on Victory Records. <laughs> uh, so you can you can imagine how that went down with that fan base, like what. You know, you got all these punk and hardcore dudes, you know, they're all like, yeah, man, hate breed for life, right? And then and then Earth Crisis, one of the greatest hardcore bands, even back then people were like, they're the greatest, one of the greatest bands doing this style. Uh, and I just, I don't know what to say about it, to be honest. It's just, it sticks up, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh, it doesn't succeed as a new metal album. It doesn't succeed as a hardcore album. Like, I appreciate hearing hardcore influences in a new metal album. I think that is kind of unique, you know. <laughs> it's like, not good. I'm grasping for straws here, but like, uh, I do, I do think that it is very unique hearing that hardcore element. But like, if you if you want a band that came out of a hard out of the hardcore scene that successfully mixes like hip hop and uh, yeah. and new metal and hardcore, uh, listen to P- old Pod, you know, or um, you know, or even yeah, like even Amur, yeah, like bands like that like that just were able to do it tastefully <laughs> can you say this that is just not, <laughs> about new metal <laughs> this is not good i mean no I, that's the thing though is like i like new metal yeah you know was it never really uh, tastefully done no i guess tastefully is not really the right <laughs> word for it but i'm trying to be tasteful in my criticism this is it's just fine. a bad earth crisis record guys yeah like just straight up this is just not a good this is not a good representation of the band at all 
My gut reaction when I listened to this for the first time, clearly they're influenced by Pantera because they're trying to stay groovy. Clearly, we have the new metal influences, but I could not help comparing this record to the early releases by Project 86. I'm sorry, we don't talk about them. It had a very distinct sound that was somewhere in the middle of the self-titled Project 86 and Truthless Heroes. And I had to look at the dates on this one. Coming out in 2000, mixing that style of rock with punk rock beats, you have that hip-hop influenced hardcore delivery, and then we're just going to sing melodic parts. To me, it kind of scratched the same itch that those records did. By no means is this album a drawing black lines. And I like Truthless Heroes, but it's not the best album by that band. But for a fan of that style that lives and breathes those early records, give this to them. They're going to love it. Well, I mean, if you're going to compare it to Drawing Black Lines, I mean, again, that record is a magnum opus uh, compared compared to this. I mean, this is just this is a band that I they that had gotten popular, you know, being hardcore and doing really well in that scene. And then I get it. You, you, you play an you play on Ozfest. Everybody checks you out. You're exposed to more people than you've ever been exposed to ever. Uh, as far as audience goes, you had a deal with Roadrunner Records. You put out a record. Um, things don't really work out, but you're still a more popular band than the last time you were on Victory, right? Uh, and so this is this is to me this sounds like a management thing, guys. This is what all the kids are doing now. This is what you should do. It makes so much sense. Let's get a more commercial sounding record out of you guys and you're going to sell to the roof. I don't think they sold out, but I think that I, I, I just based on the way the rest of their music sounds and I'm saying this in a vacuum. I haven't read in interviews or 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 read, you know, what the reviews were of this at the time that it came out. But I remember not liking Slither the first time I heard it, and it definitely didn't seem like the same band was making the creative decisions here. Uh, and this is what you get. And you can hear it a little bit. They try to be hardcore again in places. And those few moments are fine. But you just, once the rapping comes in and the clean vocals, it's all stuff you've never heard. And it's not like, again, it's not done like Candiria, where that had kind of always been kind of the blueprint. This is completely out of left field. And it's not what fans of hardcore want. Um, so yeah, it's not, it's not amazing, but I do, I do enjoy listening to it sometimes just as a, like, remember this really weird record by earth crisis that I actually <laughs> paid full price for when it came out, you know, like one of those 2001 last of the sane. Oh, well, this one's a freebie cause this is just a covers album. I was like, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So ha. You want to hear earth crisis play songs that other bands have played. This is where you can listen to that. <laughs> Nice save. <laughs> I mean, I never, uh, you know, I didn't ask to hear Earth Crisis play Children of the Grave or the intro to Hell Awaits, but, you know, this is just the world that we're living in, kids. Um, this is this is evidence of having no idea what you're going to do next. Uh, yeah. Because you went from <laughs> yeah. a new metal record to this. Now we got to no, do the just, covers, guys. This, that, to me, honestly, after the last record and then the covers record, and you kind of look at some of the bands on the covers record, like I think there's a Rolling Stones cover of a uh, shit. What was it? Paint it black. Paint yeah, it paint black. it black. I mean, it's like I think that almost illustrates like you can have diversity. That's fine. Like I understand like people are into a lot of different shit, and it's those kind of weird influences that you know sometimes create magic between you know three, four, five guys in a room sitting down jamming. But you look at this covers record, and I almost think it's a it's honestly a striking example of maybe why there's like confusion as to who the fuck this band is especially after slither like i look at some of this and i'm like really rolling stones like i guess cool tr for trying it if you're into it but like i look at that and i'm just like why no thank you i don't <laughs> again not my earth crisis hashtag 2021 <laughs> right well this wasn't um obviously this probably wasn't like great for the band um i don't know why they broke up Everything that I've re ever read is said that they broke up on good terms and it was just a commitment thing. I, that's what this live record, this covers record feels like. Is it one more commitment to getting out of like being done with your contract? Yeah, because they were done with victory after this. Yep. And then the band essentially went to sleep until like 2009. Yep. They come back eight years later. But thank God that they did because oh Earth Crisis, God. Earth Crisis came back eight yes. years later. Oh, the yeah. actual Earth Crisis. To the death. So I guess that last record was so bad they all broke up. <laughs> <laughs> but. That's not the official reason, but sure. No. 
No. Um, this record, though, this is what I want Earth Crisis to sound like. It's pissed. It sounds fucking huge. Against the current, it's just a straight fucking ass beater of a song to get the party started. And Carl's vocals finally sound strong and really complement the music so much better. This was the one I kept coming back to when I was going through the discography. I wanted more stuff like Plague Bearers, how it leads into Control Through Fear. Like, that's the kind of shit that will get you way fucking hyped. With that feedback ringing out before hearing Control Through Fear, Let the Chaos Reign. Like, this album has it all. It just oozes attitude that's been missing for a long time in their records. It has that modern heaviness to it as well, where, like, they are, this is much heavier than any of the 90s material. You know, you could say the same thing about Hatebreed, too. You know, you go back and, I don't know, the Satisfaction is the Death of Desire is still pretty kind of an ass beater. But anyway, uh, we already talked about Hatebreed, sorry. Uh, but the, um, but for Two to the Death, I've seen so many bands disappear for a decade and come back, and their comeback record, they either try to sound exactly the way they sounded before, you know, um, but let's see, Earth Crisis couldn't really do that, right? Like, you can't put a new metal record out in 2010. 2020, maybe, but not in 2010. And nobody nobody really remembers Earth Crisis for, for that album, you know? Um, so, like, okay, let's get back to the basics, the, the, the root of what our band is. And we're just a heavy, metallic, hardcore band. They're not really a metalcore band in the 2010 sense. Sure, they're mixing heavy metal riffs with, with hardcore vocals and beatdowns and all that kind of sort of thing, but, like... Yeah, this record just gets you pumped. It's heavy, it's in your face, and it's a, such a great modern example of what hardcore should be and how effective this music actually can be. Now that we live in a world where you can lay down a record like this and it sound crystal clean, perfect. All the mud's gone. I always say the n hardcore bands from the 90s, it's all super muddy, you know, but all the mud's gone here. It, there's nothing here left but kill. Again, I'm excited that this doesn't have the dissonant tropes that are associated with hardcore. It's just riffs. Play heavy, bark at the mic. Earth Crisis is here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and they never leave from here out. You got that right. Yeah, I mean, it took them a long time and a decade of just sitting around being like, what should we do? Uh, and turned into this, like, let's just, let's just pick a sound and stick with it. Yeah. And see what we could do with it, right? Instead of sounding like a different band on each record. Uh, and I'm sure, like, we, we're not going to be super popular for having that opinion, but like, I think that the, I think that the most recent three Earth Crisis records are better than anything else they've ever done. For sure. Um, and everybody's going to say, "Oh, it's just his age or whatever." But I mean, look at me, man. I've got so much gray hair. Like, I'm, it's not an age thing. I, I, I enjoyed those early Earth Crisis records, but I don't enjoy them as much as I enjoy these, at all. Is it time to neutralize the threat? Let's do it, man. This is the Empire Strikes Back of the Earth Crisis Trilogy. Neutralize the threat. 2011. So uh, they go a lot. They go more, a little bit more melodic hardcore on this one. Uh, and I think it complements them perfectly because they're su they're still super, like, super heavy, super in your face, um, still pumped. But like, I don't know, like you're punching people in the pit, but now you feel good, kind of good about it. You know, you're not, you're not angry. You're just, in, you're invincible. It's like being high on PCP, you know, like <laughs> you feel, you feel, you, you guys can relate, right? Like sure. You just get in there. You just get in there, and you're super, super strong, <laughs> in everybody's face, and nobody can stop you. That's what it's like for me when I listen to Earth Crisis. So that's how you neutralize the threat. You just take a bunch of PCP and fucking start destroying people. Yeah, I think the hard part though is I don't realize that I'm actually the threat that they're trying to <laughs> neutralize at that point, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 insane. Uh, it's 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 my favorite of the of the most recent three. Uh, I like the I like the blend of melody and groove and um, obviously breakdown, you know. Um, and they play real breakdowns, none of that like two thousands. You know, start the song off with that. Check out my MySpace page, uh, like and follow. You know that sort of thing. When everything falls away. Yeah. So like this is this is fantastic. This is I mean I I don't have a lot to say about it other than like this is the kind of hardcore that I listen to when I want to listen to like real hardcore. It's interesting to hear you say that because there's not a lot of dissonance here and you're kind of known for being the dissonant hardcore guy. There is so much groove in these riffs. The influences are clear and I'm surprised that Dan is in for riffs today more than dissonance and garbage sounding vocals that are just trying to infect your brain with their ideas. Nope, this time we're just going to be straight hate breed guys. Enjoy. Well, I mean, I, I think that there's a definitely a place for both. Uh, in my fandom, 
Um, sometimes I'm in an Earth Crisis mood, and sometimes I'm in like a Dillinger mood. You know, um, I like both bands for different reasons, and so it's just that's just my palette. I mean, I prefer. I, I don't want to even say prefer. Like some days, I just want to hear stuff that's totally chaotic, chaotic, and other days, I like hearing stuff that's a little bit more structured. And uh, Earth Crisis just i don't know they they scratch that itch for me um where i feel i feel these records these records are unique in that they make me feel like i felt the first time i heard something like earth crisis but they they make me feel that now like with a record that maybe just came out a few years ago yeah this is again just a really tight sounding band who's really bringing some great songs with cohesive parts title track uh that galloping part into that uh straight single note riff before the chorus quote unquote chorus again this is what i want from this band i don't know exactly what changed to get them here but two albums back to back that are just unrelenting honestly there's no bad tracks it's just a straight again ass beater of a record you i think when you think earth crisis these last two records are really what you're thinking of oh yeah it's like they've been around a long, a long enough time to where they can't help just but just be like masters of the genre. And they, they're the ones that know how to make the right decisions musically. And sometimes that decision is let's not necessarily throw so much variation in that it just throws people off. Yeah. You know, because people are, you know, when you when you listen to a band like Earth Crisis, you're here for one thing. Godzilla. That's that's to mosh or Godzilla or Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> um, or, you know, um, Godzilla. Gamera friend of all children i'm really really enamored to these records and i i still go back to them over and over and over again um because even though like i don't think that this type of hardcore has a lot of depth beyond the lyrics it's fun um i don't care like i'm not this is not the kind of band i go to listen to to hear something super progressive or super proggy like this is like my palate cleanser from stuff like that so um uh, it was a really good palate cleanser based on the band we were listening to at the same time to do these episodes 2014 salvation of innocence man these vocals have come a long way yeah i'm uh, feeling the hate breed vibe of just do the thing that works and it's fine just keep doing the thing that works guy because i don't need you to change and develop and become a different type of hardcore vocalist i just want to hear the fucking songs and the beef and the fucking riffs and i want to go crazy for the next 35 to 45 minutes and earth crisis delivers they show why they're an influence on everyone yeah i mean the song shiver like gives me just that you know um it is so heavy and carl's vocals are just like i like him more than i like somebody like josta because josta's vocals didn't really like significantly change carl has this weird mixture of the old hard old school hardcore aesthetic while still having enough like vocal range to ha still have that metal growl behind his voice it's not like his voice isn't so distorted that he can't be heard or understood um and you know he doesn't have the extreme metal vocal that a lot of these older hardcore bands would utilize like a candiria um but for the hardcore bark he's one of the best at it in that he's articulate he's clear he's loud he's angry and actually is able to vary his voice enough um like my favorite thing that, that he does is like when he does like a higher like a higher pitched uh scream it, it it almost has this like vortex effect to it i can't really even explain it but like um and it reminds me a little bit of like what sean sounded like on the old zeo records um and again that again comes from the old school hardcore thing but it's recorded so well that it doesn't sound old uh it sounds very fresh to me yeah i felt like on this one we kind of got away from a little bit of the sound from the last two records um but almost in a more straight ahead metal kind of way if that makes any sense i know this is a concept record but for me i didn't really follow it like i i, I don't know if the comic that i guess is coming out or came out with the release of this record i don't know if it would have helped with that but like you know how like on the uh Cattle Decap record I was talking about on the last record of theirs where it felt like a, a, a bigger theme was going on and it felt like kind of a concept record. Even if it wasn't, this one is, and I never really got that sense of, oh, this is, you know, this, this three part, uh, I think in reading about it, it was like from the perception of like the animals being tested on protesters and somebody else. I, I don't remember what the other the third perspective was, but it's a tri it's kind of basically broken into three parts like a trilogy. Yeah. And I never really got any of that. Like none of the music really 
felt like it was that. So I uh, I don't know. I don't know if that was just me where it, that that concept never really stuck. Um, but I also don't really listen to this kind of music for concepts. Um, I just want some slamming riffs, some sick mosh call parts, and, you know, just have fun. Um, this kind of, you know, delivers that. But I think out of the three, this is kind of the letdown for me. Concept records are fun. I like listening to a record that doesn't just have good songs on it, but forces you as a listener to take the whole journey, sit down and listen to the record. It's one of my favorite pastimes, just listening to a record. But even though this has a concept, you don't have to do that. You could listen to any song off this record and get the same enjoyable experience of listening to Earth Crisis as you would for any of the other albums. Not every concept record can be broken up that way. So it's a breath of fresh air to have one that, yeah, it's a concept, but it doesn't have to be if you're not in the mood today. This is the second time this month, I think, that I've just breezed through a concept. And I've had this record for years, and I've never even picked up on a concept. Um, it's weird with some bands how I just really won't pay attention to lyrics. <laughs> but others I will, uh, like, really, very seriously. But uh, I, ne I actually never did pick up on the concept of this record, which is kind of interesting. I'm glad we could bring you <laughs> forward I'm glad you into... you that too, Dan. <laughs> Your camera froze for a second, and one second you were over there. And then the next second, you were right in the front. And we were like, <laughs> it's what I do, man. Well, I'm glad you could find your way to enjoy a concept record without paying attention to lyrics, Dan. Yeah, well, you know, if I if, if every if everything that I say can't be contradicted in the next episode, then what are we even doing here? <laughs> Final thoughts on Earth Crisis, Dan. Uh, Earth Crisis is is one of the most influential hardcore bands out of the out of the early 90s scene um they've influenced so many of my favorite bands i can't even mention all of them uh here tonight or it would take way too long and um but i can tell you that these guys were important because of how passionate they were about what they were passionate about and a lot of bands you know sometimes if a concept becomes too much for somebody uh they'll drop it and and just move on to something else uh, this is a band that's not really that worried about telling us what their personal feelings are. They're more worried about, like, that the world is going to end and that people and animals alike are being mistreated and that we need to uh, we need to do something about that. That That's always been this band. Uh, Pre-breakup, post-breakup, it's always been the Earth Crisis thing. And uh, they're a band that I think also has very good music to, accom to accompany that message. John, what about you? It's obvious when listening to this band's discography why they're influential in the hardcore realm. But honestly, I feel like their influence is farther reaching because of how great the newer records have been. I think they could influence another generation of bands with what they've been doing over the last three albums. They're still able to maintain a like where I was saying they were trend hopping before. It felt like they were trend hopping. I feel like now they're, they've stuck to what they do and they do it better than a lot of people. And I think at times that's what being a legacy band kind of is, is kind of reminding people why you're, you're that fucking good and why your name carries the weight that it does. And I think Earth Crisis over the last three years or 10 years at this point, uh, since they've come back, have definitely showcased that. I think Earth Crisis is one of the most influential names in hardcore. They're not the most complex band from a riff standpoint or composition standpoint. They're just playing fucking heavy songs. And it doesn't need to be any more complex than that. Sometimes the riff is enough, and Earth Crisis shows you on multiple records why that's true. Despite the misstep in the middle, the band does not really have a bad album. You should definitely step on at the right time, either at the very beginning or in 2009, if you want the majority of their original material to be the most impactful thing. But you're still going to enjoy the records, and we mentioned the live record earlier. They clearly had a presence that was worth developing, and it went somewhere in 2009 that modern metal or modern hardcore just wasn't willing to go. It wasn't about dissonance. It wasn't about Gothenburg riffs. It was play heavy music, and Earth Crisis does that. So listen to Earth Crisis. You're going to have a good time. Damn, what's your album of the week? My album of the week is has been a few times before, and that would be Beautiful Loneliness by Travail. John, what about you? I'm going to go with a classic, uh, Paramore's Riot. That is a phenomenal record from a drumming and guitar playing standpoint. The mixing on it is 
Chef's Kiss. Good. For me, it's Alice in Chains. Self-titled, because it has Sludge Factory on it. Very nice. Take us out, DFT. If you guys have been listening to our podcast for a while and you would like to be more involved in what bands we pick, who we interview, what we talk about, or just want to tell us something about the show that maybe we don't know, or uh, give us some sort of feedback, you can do that by sending us an email at show at gmail.com. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash discography discussion. You can find us on Instagram at Discuss Metal. You can find us on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Uh, you can find all of our podcasts at DiscussMetal.com. You guys might be noticing a theme here. We really like things to be Discuss Metal. If you click on the link in our show notes, it'll take you to our Discord server where ourselves, as well as fans of the show, are chatting 24 hours a day from all over the world. If you want to get yourself some sweet discography discussion merch, you can go to our Teespring store. There'll be a link in the show notes that'll take you to our vast variety of different types of merch, up to and including cell phone cases, hoodies, t-shirts, men's t-shirts, women's t-shirts, comfy socks, you name it, we've got it all with our logo all over it. So uh, make sure to check that stuff out, guys. And uh, until next time, stay metal. And on that note, this has been episode 211 of Discography Discussion. Thank you for listening. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Subscribe to our podcast everywhere you listen to podcasts, including Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and Stitcher. Visit DiscussMetal.com for all things discography discussion. And please send questions and comments to Dan and Joe Show at gmail.com. If you are not a patron, you can become one at patreon.com forward slash discuss metal. We have some sweet perks. Give us your money. One dollar a month gets you into that exclusive album review feed. And your precious armory. We will need it. 